as they were all quickly propped out. A lot of resources used for Lust Boy. <laughs> Over two. That would have had to have been an atomic arrow if they wanted to get that one out. Pole Belter may have been in laser range, though. They are still trying. Still going into the jungle here after using ultimates. Have the summoners do it. We'll see how they Both top laners also have teleport if this does erupt into a big-time fight. But with Lust Boy being down summoner spells, it's kind of difficult for TSM to collapse on. Speaking of which, there is an is looking for it. Giant Spartan just charged up his rage bar for this. And Dyrus was huddling under his turret at the time. Both of them trying to prep for this fight. It goes down to a smite fight that Smithy wins. Another bar in the top lane. This could be good timing if Dyrus can get out of this with a high amount of HP to teleport down. And a small, small NAR for the fight. Still looks like the dozy do here for Wards and Pot. Smithy's going to pick up Scuttle and actually everybody disperses from the area for now for Dragon. That invade though from CLG to catch Lust Boy. That was so lucky for TSM that both Santorin and Lust Boy were level 6 for the double disengage. That's why we keep highlighting the Janna and the Gragas. And I think we're going to be seeing more of that as this game moves towards the team fight phase. Uh, the fact that TSM has actually taken so much disengage is looking to hamstring CLG's aggression a little bit. Obviously CLG has good initiation tools and initiation tools. Ash Arrow, plus Echo, plus an R Ultimate, uh -huh. all together. But the disengage is also so great. So it's going to be a really cute back and forth of who can engage on whom. TSM actually would have the more reliable initiation, mainly because CLG doesn't have the same disengage tools. And one Yasuo Ultimate can wreak havoc. And yeah. what just happened here was there was a ward up top. Santorin walked off the ward. Very clear call there from CLG. We've got information on the jungle that will punish him on the opposite side of the map. Done, very well executed. They get the dragon for it. Santorin doesn't get anything for this gank. And recall to the rush river. So not much to gain for him on the top side. CLG should definitely know where we be going with the right man before I the last six weeks at the end of the split where he did the dragon's compositions. TSM had a few of them themselves, but CLG, this is their bread and butter composition. Load for this arrow. Yeah. Well, CLG loves being able to choose their own engagements, so yeah. that's why their disengage is so valuable, especially with their style of constantly pushing up to enemy turrets and just seeing them down again and again. Incredibly pivotal. Santorin is waiting for another lane counter gank here, but look at this. Pobelter comes in from behind the turret. Counter the counter gank, and it teleports as well. Oh, Pobelter, like you said, from behind the turret. They weren't expecting him right away. The exhaust for the body slam as well, mitigating some of the damage. Belter stays He's alive! The laser! Just oh, missing! Oh, One more attack! Nobody's going through the turret. A good call as well. CLG may have gone deeper there previously, but CLG wants the turret now. It's miraculous the Poe Belter made it to that spot without being seen or called by Bjergsen from the mid lane. And then so much of the pressure from Victor being able to shove up the lane and then roam eventually, we get where he wants to go. Well, it's also because of the wards they laid down to get that dragon. They've got double peak wards in the river, so Poe Belter can feel confident pushing his lane and then roaming. It's all the way behind the turret, and even with the teleport answer from uh, Dyrus having to cancel it there. CLG, another first blood. Yeah, as you said, he walks through the double pinks and river to get there. Afro is super aggressive because they're honestly planning a dive. Santorin looks like he's going to throw a wrench into things, and it's actually Zion with the clutch interrupt. If Nautilus came in there, this could have been a much different fight. Definitely would have turned towards TSM favor. Those little things continue to fall in CLG's favor, and they're not just falling in, I should say, absolutely rewarding to the plays they're making. Oh, he missed the sweep! Yeah. Just over on the other side, the rest of CLG is going to be here to party. And it looks like we got a crowd, actually. A whole 5v5 may go on after this one. Bjergsen throws out the ball. Concussive blows this down. Smithy goes in by himself. The team can't really close that gap just yet. Dyrus takes the arrow to the face. Should be safe in the situation with a flash out. A lot of back and forth there with some summer spells. He said, do take down the turret. But CLG now pressing back. They want to answer yeah. here. And there's the Gragas disengaged down, the Nautilus fault down. Bjergsen doesn't have very many ways to get into the fight at this point. So CLG feeling pretty confident to move up. The Gragas body slam could still net Bjergsen a nice knockup target. That's true. That's why Alan Gale almost got the setup in the tornado. 
setting up for the fight. Both teams staring into the white of each other's eyes right now. This one has to actually Dyrus just back yeah. without teleporting I mean, there. The punishment as well. TSM doesn't really have wave clear to right. stop this as well. So it's a lot of damage they can get down. Kogmar doing his best with the Gragas. Really almost no turret damage goes down. I wonder how long TSM will hold this as Dyrus pushes down the bottom lane. Yeah, the Spree that Sildi were doing this because they had a big wave down bottom. Now they know that Dyrus is down there without teleport because of Zai being able to cancel it in the last play. So they were going to get a turret either way. It was either a bunch of damage to the enemies down bottom or they have to give up the outer turret and COG, their re uh, pressure is rewarded. Disperse now, we put double lift towards that top side of free farm as he loves to. COG gets an ideal solo turret kill for double it. I love being able to isolate him with turrets since he is such a poor part of their late game fighting strategy. Surprising they're able to get that solo kill 16 minutes into the game. Yeah, finally enough, the clothes no longer stack, so red button, run, draw. Three But he gets regeneration, so damage. He hits him with the burn to that. He still wants nice it. Nice wind wall. Glacial Fisher fizzled out. Nothing coming of it there. The wind wall from Bjergsen perfectly placed down. TSM gets another look at the fight. Yeah, and the dragon setup had been favoring COG with vision control, but now they are down at NAR teleport as well as a flash ultimate onto Aphra. Pretty much nothing burned from TSM. So if TSM was going to take a fight, it would be around now. They just have to make sure not to be in the corridor to eat the victor damage. The only thing for TSM that's bad is that Turtle's really low on mana and uh, Kogma actually does rely significantly on that for the team fight. Looks like they're gonna come up. Yeah, this is almost surely a fight. Zion Spartan still level 10. There's a lot of level 11s on the side of Team Solomon. Dyrus hooks out of that one. TSM trying to restructure this one for themselves. The Nar Bar is out. They're trying to wait for that to cool down, but their health bars are not gonna last that long. Chaos Storm slowly chasing as it starts to go out. And they now want to re-engage, just like outside their base. They're trying to counter it when and when now they can go in for this. And Dragon looks like he's just gonna be angry for this entire time. Nobody has the focus. Dragon wins that team fight. Fights a Keep that. Everyone has to find another day. So many resources burned from that one. Low mana on tons of people. Turtle's gonna stick around to try and finish this turn, but he, this piece is gonna be slow on the next dragon. This actually could cost TSM uh, the next dragon. The fact that Turtle's trying to push this wave in. He already had his turning force, and he's only sitting on 700 gold, so uh, the fact that he didn't get the turret, that's actually very good. Yeah, he's gonna be really slow back out there now. It's basically slow these dragon. So there was no follow-up of Voidus. Full menu way helps them take down mid turret now. Let's see what they can do with 15 seconds towards Baron. There's no coverage there. It's still about the dragon. Oh, that vision. That's a stun on Lust Boy. Deja vu for Lust Boy. Can he get out of it the second time? The arrow hits this time, however. And now they're on to Bjergsen. He tried to cover. Oh, dangle that character to the entire team. This might be a bad pick. 
Smith for counter logic painting. With Pearson, get back in. He goes in for Smithy, but gets taken down immediately with that time winder. They're going to start trading kills back and forth. Wild Turtle in a bad spot. Double if maybe able to clean up a few more before it the him surprise. And he does get one. A double kill for Turtle in his death. And CLG come up with the ace. 20 minutes. Another bloodbath fight, but this one favors CLG because of the ace. Incredibly close back and forth, but often because Lust Boy was caught at the start of the fight, CLG gains the upper hand. Yep, they're gonna get the dragon off it. They also had bottom wave pushing, so it does get to the turret. Lust Boy is gonna be there to try and salvage these minions. Looks like he's gonna even hold it here and wait for Turtle to arrive. Yeah, such a close fight here because of how tight the corridor was. This is what preparation and vision control will do for you. Lust Boy didn't have his ultimate, the long cooldown from that last team fight, and they do take him out. So Pierce can actually use Last Breath onto Double If really early on in the fight, and then he flashed the arrow after that. So everyone's incredibly low as they're chasing after this one. Turtle not able to choose the target there. Does get another sack of bomb on him. Double up procs it for the kill. Yeah. Double up with his Bloodthirster Ash more defensive capabilities. If it right. was an Aya Dash, he would have been zeroed out at the start of that fight and would have been able to do damage. That's really important in the, in the greater context of this because that also would have meant that Bjergsen, since he would have taken fewer auto attacks from Ash, may have even cleaned up that fight uh, with Yasuo as he was trying to dash through the sides at the end of that one. Not a lot to gain it. Playing very smooth right now in the series as well. You can also see why Ash pretty much taken away from them that first game. They can just go clean initiations now being up. Yeah, and the second half of that that I was wondering about a couple minutes ago yeah. is would Pobelter also build with the defensive route? And he has gone with the early dodges this time, deviating from the last game. Afro gets really angry. They get all Turtle! Turtle in the back. He's going to go down immediately. X Smithy finds his priority target. Santorin follows. Here we go. X Smithy on the double kill. They're chasing for Dyrus and Lust Boy. But do CLG head down mid? No, they start tailing on to TSM. Timewinder doesn't hit. They have to choose a new target. CLG is not giving TSM time to breathe. Right after the dragon goes down, they go right back to the mid lane. They're using their chains of initiation really well there. Turtle had the cleanse down, meaning he was a target for the arrow, and that moves into a 22-minute Baron attempt. This is honestly a CLG we see playing past when CLG was their best. These guys are playing amazingly from top to bottom. And Smithy is showing up well now with big criticisms in the beginning of the split for him, as well as Pole Belter. Will he show up? And he is. Yeah, coming into this series as well, CLG, the only way they ought to qualify for Worlds is if they win this. If That's they right. lose, they'd have to go play in the regional qualifier. So a 3 0 here is of so much importance. They Provided themselves with the path here. The first time they're seated in the playoffs as well, they get a chance to look at the other teams, see what they're up against. And they just take it to them. It really seems to be that year for CLG, but TSM still has a say. Only 23 minutes into game number three, they are still alive in this series and still fighting back. Yeah, we're kind of reaching that critical mass point for CLG though, because it is a 6,000 gold lead with a Baron buff. And this is exactly the moment when CLG wants to have the Baron buff. Wild Turtle can't hear the minions, he's not far enough yet, especially Baron minions, and the core weakness, as you will, of a Yasuo mid is your susceptibility to siege, especially when the other team has Baron buff. Basically, it's a 5,500 gold differential, and if TSM wants to stop the turret cascade, they have to fight with that difference. Plus, they don't even just have to be worried about the siege. CLG are also very well prepared to go for a dive as well. These side turrets are even more dangerous to defend. Yeah, I mean, the outer turrets are the dangerous ones, but at the same time, if they let the outer ones be taken, the gold lead balloons into 9 to 10,000, the game becomes even more insurmountable. So you almost think this is the do-or-die moment uh, for TSM, but really, there's such a small win condition if they do fight. Yeah. Flex and their bosses here with Parallel Convergence just to get the push off the turret as it goes down. Still gonna work this Baron buff towards the bottom lane. Getting this inhibitor would really open up the map for Counter Logic Gaming, something they've owned pretty much every game from the get go. Even with a bit of a mistake this game, they've been able to route that and find themselves back into an advantage. Yeah, with this Baron buff, they can just continue to switch targets over to the next secondary turret here. They're laying down towards as they travel through the jungle, yeah. keep TSM boxed up inside their own base so that TSM's own force will expire. Here they go for the initiation, though. They found double lift. 
might be getting themselves a little too sure oh. of that. Yeah, I don't think this is going to work. Aframu goes down. False sense of security for CLG. They feel like they're a little more powerful, maybe. Still staying for the fight. A 5v4 as they start to split off. Pearson in a 1v1 now with Smithy. That did not look like it was going his way, and he has to back off. Dyrus now for the peel, but he goes to the front. Pearson called for that. They wanted the last breath. Sion Spartan is able to hit it. Double it stays alive with the Bloodthirster build. Plus boy in the middle. The monsoon goes off, but it's all he's got for the team. TSM is now all for themselves. Smithy comes up. That's a triple over the entire fight. Oh. And I don't think they're going to be able to clean it finally. Dyrus stays alive after the initiation with Santorin. TSM finds the impossible fight. Down 7,000 gold against a Baron team. They actually get a clean engage in the jungle that isn't in defense of their turrets right there. This type of fight is the only thing that can keep TSM alive in this game, and they got it. And they barely came out. They barely came out with some gold after it, too. Yeah, I mean, now, COG was so spread at the start of this one. Yeah, so this one, initially, Double is actually able to juke Santorin and flash as well at the same time. There's a desync between Dyrus and Santorin. Santorin actually knocks Fobelter out of the way from the hook. But then the big re-engage is here, where they set up Bjergsen for the Yasuo ultimate. It's yeah. the Janna into the hook here, and he's able and to get two. Pobelter gets annihilated. That's the biggest thing in this fight, is Pobelter getting annihilated. Sound Spartan doesn't and quite get Meganar at the right time. The Lust Boy reset of the fight for TSM. Yeah. Smithy did have a pretty big ulti there on Echo, though. Also, we have to point out that Smithy is 7-0 on Echo, the tank Echo, meaning the DPS of CLG is not the main holders of this 6,000 gold advantage, so the team fights will be a little bit closer. TSM cornered themselves off. I think we got another fight on our hands. Bit of a shield there in the Parallel Convergence, but they are on to X Smithy. He's going to be out of the fight. Whoa! Jumping straight in. Double up now, coming from the top side. Zion Spartan had a beautiful ultimate as they continue the fight. TSM definitely in retreat on this one as they lose Santorin. They're on their way for Lust Boy now. He should have the movement speed to get away, and this should mean some lane pressure. Coming yeah, in. but they're on the rocks on the map, Riv. This is TSM running into CLG's base. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a full true. retreat. They are so scattered right here. Bjergsen is turned tail and red. CLG's actually pretty well in this chase, but they should clean up. Luckily, yeah, they're up. for Team Solo Mid, CLG's waves are still on CLG's side of the map, but there is a dragon that's alive, and that's TSM pretty much losing any pressure. They just gained oh, more the advantage too. out of the last fight. Winter's oh, no. across the top side of the wall. Afro flashed over Raptor Pit to make it count. The plays keep coming. The great babe. Uh, TSM sticking around in the lane just for some... Indian farm there. Wow, CLG just took over with that. The amount of pressure these teams are under right now, Kobe. Madison Square Garden, TSM been in every single LCS final. CLG never won an LCS final. TSM does not want to let their longtime rivals pick up the first round of their down. Not only 2-0 in the series, but also by a substantial amount of gold in this game. They are sticking around because they're trying to claw their way back, and they do not have the fallback pattern of Wake Crew that they are so accustomed to having, so they have to fight. Yeah, they're only, the only pattern that they do have is a full Wombo fight, and they haven't been able to do it. Very interesting setup that we see TSM going with. Yasuo played by Zion Spark. Not seeing too much of Bjergsen coming out of the season, coming out of any of the playoffs. Now, Yasuo, Yasuo, each side of the map does not seem like Team Solo Mid was ready. That communication still on the engages. Bus Boy's been there to save a lot of people, not to help the fight reset and go back in. Shot. Santorin might have a pretty good move. 
Really poor vision control by TSN. They have a scrying orb as well as a Pokemon to try and scout the brushes, but if they miss one of them, it's either a Baron going down or a Queen Fight for CLG. And at this juncture in the game with the lead that CLG has already completed, could very well be the NLCS championship. The team called for a shot due to the fact that they had TSM split on the left and bottom side. Okay, Dyrus is the only one getting hit. Right. And it does not look like they want to follow Chaos Storm. 50% HP. Wild Turtle does get hit by the boomerang, but there's not much follow-up right now. It looks like Team Solo mid able to take a breath here after almost getting engaged on. Well, this is all the preparation of CLG. They prepped yeah, the top still wave. In their favor. They prepped the top wave before they start doing these Baron Bates. So even if it's unsuccessful, they got a big wave into the turret there. Pearson's forced to move up and still to retreat. And now Turtle's at half health from the last half engaged, so he needs yep. the time to life steal off this one, whereas CLG really didn't take the damage from that. Ash are already half off of cooldown. They are trying their best to keep the pressure applied. They don't have much to save each other either, other than that Monsoon. Oh, cleanse and they cleanse. get the stunts. That's on the Turtle. Still can't cleanse. He tries to use it, but he still gets hit so hard. Flown into the fight. Turtle's alive with the Storm Shield from Lust Boy as he's keeping an eye and the team is peeling. But CLG continues to try for the kill. Lust Boy with the Flash Monsoon. Ridiculous. He can only do that once every five minutes, though. <laughs> can't afford to make that mistake again. That cost them the flash not only on Lustboy, but also all of Turtle Summoners as well. He is extremely vulnerable now. Yeah, and TSM is also an incredibly inconvenient part of the game. There are Frozen Hearts and Randwood Zomans completed on the side of CLG, and the physical damage dealers of Yasuo and Kogma on TSM's side are not even close to Last Whisper. Turtle gets hit! Oh, hey, backing right in the middle around Baron. They had the war, but there was still vision. And it looks like Santorum may go down next. Pearson will definitely follow! CLG is absolutely cleaning up in the middle of the rift right now! Team Solo Mid gets caught backing! You can only hold out for so long against this relentless pressure from CLG. The Ash Arrow finds itself true once again, and CLG goes for Baron. They burned all of Turtle Summoners in the last engage. This barring and Okay, if that tornado steals... All right, it's not gonna lock it up. Afro's gonna stop yeah. it, and CLG grab Baron. A little love for Bloodwater. It's all right, though. <laughs> Didn't happen. It's been done before. <laughs> oh my gosh. This, however... My CLG has not been done before. What stellar play coming into the playoffs throughout as well and through the end of the season. They said themselves we came out of a slump. It's always easy to hear somebody say that feel good for them, but yeah. they are absolutely showing that they came out. We'll see this once again. Turtle didn't walk into the brush with the rest of his team that was under peak ward cover. Wow. And that prompted the Ash Arrow from Dublin. Game-defining recall fail right there from Wild Turtle. The rest of CLG can just pile. And you have to figure how strong CLG thinks they are with pink board coverage in that. It might just be a turtle bait, but they didn't yeah. care at all. Yeah. Lock it down, turtle. <laughs> was, he's had to use his cleanse pretty much on the defense. Yeah, it was already there's been so much focus. And now another Baron got push. And the only way TSM defense. Not at the bottom turret. Story just on the other side of the map, Conlogic Gaming was here around the same time last game. One minute on Dragon brings them to four. It's something they, they may not even need to go for. They're not onto the turret just yet. They're actually going for more kills still with the arrow down. They give a little assurance to Team Solo Mid that they can hang out for a bit. Smithy does have the chrono break to get into a good situation, but his shadow's now still inside so he can fight. Afro move, going Salami, taking that turret. He knows he goes down. He's letting the team fight. Just taking the turret completely, knowing Counter Logic is it. stronger. The double oh, no. kill, the triple kill now coming in for Pole Belter. Double is going to clean one up. 40 seconds on the clock, boys. And the faithful shall be rewarded. CLG takes the inhibitor. They're going to take the Nexus turrets, and they're going to take a trip to Worlds. This is going to be it. Counter Logic Gaming fighting every season since there has been one and now taking down Team Solo Mid at Madison Square Garden to be your 2015 Summer Split Champions. A well-earned trio by CLG. They crafted the team composition that they stepped up in the pressure and they executed time and time again when it Sports in these games against TSM. They fought early and often, and they don't drop a single game throughout the playoffs. Absolutely crazy 
Rio. Counter Logic Gaming over to Team Solo Mid. And Counter Logic Gaming is your 2015 North American Summer Split Champion. Something they have wanted for so long. And you know what? It's something the fans wanted for a long time as well. So I'm sure they're happy to give it to them. Just going back throughout LCS history, all the times that CLG has been hyped up going into the playoffs and then just fallen flat on their face, you almost never thought this moment would come. But it just happened. 3 0 against TSM. And it was due Unreal. to contributions from every single every member player. on the team. Every bit of it. There's the trophy. A lot of hard work these guys put in to get here today. Every split would start to drown out towards the end. This one started to go uphill, and you know what? They went to the top. Also to come to New York in Madison Square Garden and have by far their best playoff performance ever. X Smithy, no memes for this one. Nope. Other than great Echo and Gragas <laughs> ultimates throughout. Um, it doesn't have a good ring to it, so it's not going to catch on, but still impressive. Yeah, you're going to need some work on that. <laughs> Double lift getting his chance at Worlds. The supporting staff of Counter Logic Gaming, coaches, analysts, and the like, all part of this win right here. Fantastically played by the team. Luhi as well, barely, rarely mentioned since we haven't seen him on the stage, but coming in, practicing with Bo Belter in the mid lane. Over and over. Their coach, Blurred Lines, never on the stage with them for picks and bands because that is done by their analyst, Zeke Small. So, it's really right. the whole crew out there for COG basking in the victory. That's right. All right. Right now, we are going to send it down to the stage where Dash is standing by with your 2015 North American Summer Split Champions. That's right, Riv. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time, your 2015 North American Summer Split Champions, Counter Logic Gaming! Hotshot, I've got to come to you because this has been a long time coming for you, your organization, and your team. How does it feel to know that you can hold this tro trophy high above your head proudly for the first time with all of these guys up here on stage? I mean, I'm speechless. It's been years of blood, sweat, and tears for all of us. Sorry, my throat's shot. Um, but it's it's truly magical to be here. Thank you. Much deserved cheers and a standing ovation from the crowd. Now, turning to the team, you know, this has been a dream of yours, but to have been able to make it with all of these guys here and have them be a part of it, now you're standing here on stage with them and you're going to get to celebrate it. What does that mean? What would you like to say to these guys that helped make your dream come true? No, thank, thank you guys. You guys have been my brothers for the past three years. And... You mean so much to me, and this means so much to me, so thank you.